me hear ya. Let me hear ya. Our God is awesome. us online. Good morning, good morning. Uh, for those who are watching us online, we've just finished the first service and we're just going into the second service. So we're going to delay a bit. We're just going to get uh, our wonderful musicians who will just be playing in the background some jazz music just to uh, uh, get every one of us in the mood. Uh, those who are at home, I want you to start to pray get your articles of communion those who are coming in ushers let's make it fast we know that we have overrun the service but uh if you're watching me if you're home uh blessed be god who are, do i need to bless we got get your article of communion ready um bring your family and friends uh talk to all your homies your in-laws outlaws and enemies and just be merciful to them to come to this last day of the fast and it is palm sunday uh palm sunday is a day where jesus walked into jerusalem and they says hosanna hosanna in the highest for those who are just finding their seat in church give me a loud shout in the house oh yeah you can do better than that you can do better than that so we are just organizing ourselves uh if the camera pounds the hall you will see there's still a lot of this uh organization but don't pound the hall just leave it like that uh but we're just getting to settle now i can't start the service because these wonderful people have been waiting outside thank you so much for waiting outside come and give yourself a real round of applause thank you for your patience we just went over uh, their seats in front if they want to sit down in front uh get some people who want to sit down in front uh, as you come in we want you to take the article of communion as we will start to take communion we're in the service some chit chatting talk don't look at me and just say hello and just uh uh bless god we had a wonderful time uh, uh on friday at the connect wt connect and it was such such a grace and such a wonderful time seeing everyone and putting a face to their names amen all right just enjoy the music enjoy the music as we settle down another five minutes and we would start the service actually while they're doing that Maybe you should just bow your heads if you're in church right now, those who are at home, and just start to pray. Pray and declare God's goodness upon your life. Pray that this is the last day of the fast and there will be no more going back. No more going back. 
uh, please if they're empty seats please uh, occupy those empty seats while people can sit down there's still a lot of people trying to come forward right now if you're in church right now you may want to start stand up and let's start to pray as i did in the first service we're not waiting for people to come we're praying we we want for us lead in prayer and start to declare the power and the blessings of god upon our lives we want to start to declare that god i'm in here today to receive from you i'm here today to receive i'm not just here to be entertained that's not what we're doing we're not i don't want to be entertained i'm not here to entertain you uh, i'm here for an uh, impartation do not look at the volume uh the sound of my voice look to the impartation of what god wants so start to lift your hands and lift your voice and start to say father uh wash me anew with your power and with your grace empower me today that by the time I step out of the service, I will have a divine encounter with you. Uh, that's what we're looking for, a divine encounter with God. We glorify your name. We thank you, Jesus. Father, this is the seventh day of our fast. Shutting the door to depression. Shutting the door on anxiety and worry and sorrow. And stepping and springing into a new season for our lives. A season where there will be elevation. A season where there will be glorification. A season where there will be promotion. A season where sickness, disease and depression will have no power over our life. We're stepping into a new season of grace and power. Come and start to declare that. I'm stepping into a new season of grace and of power and of mercy in the name of Jesus. Now start to lift your voice in worship and in adoration. Start to declare and start to bless the name of the Lord God. Start to glorify as in sickness. Come and start to now lift your voice in worship. We're going into a time of worship where we're magnifying the name of the Lord. For he is good and he is kind and his mercies endure it forever. Come on, someone. Manda boho shata baha gaya. We worship you for who you are. This is not a song. Let's just sing together. Just, just worship God in your own words. You are worthy. You're good.
from the inside, from the inside of me. May you delight in the inside, yeah, in the inside of me. Still let From the inside of me, may you delight in the inside, in the inside, in the inside of me. Say, let praises rise from the inside, from the inside.
Father, we thank you for this morning. We glorify your name for this second service. Thank you for all our online folks, online members, online tribe. Thank you for those who are in church this wonderful day. And we thank you that we're ending our fast in two ways on Palm Sunday. And also it's the official end of Lent for those who follow it. And we thank you because we know that your presence has changed our life. And we give you glory and honor and praise. I ask God, God, how do you want us to uh, end this fast this is second service 98 percent of those in this service are below the age of 45 so keep standing because many people are just okay we finished can we sit down no stand do, do you I, I don't know how you sit down and pray it's fine if that's you but many of us are just lazy we need to stand do you know that when you start pacing up and down and you're praying as I said in the first service you lose weight put your apple watch on and see how many calories you will lose while you're praying I mean, just, just keep it mad, tofu, mad. By, by the time you start two calories have gone already so stand up for a while we are going to pray. And I ask God, God, how exactly should we pray if you're at home? Stand up. Did you hear me? Stand up. In fact, the way you, in my spirit, I've just gone into your house. The way you're even getting up makes it clear that you need empowerment. Some are like, uh, is that, is, uh, am I sitting down or am I standing? Stand up. Stand up. Pace. Get everyone at home to stand up as we're going to take communion. And I said to God, God, how do we end this? He says, tell my people that they are going to be living in dignity. I missed an amen upstairs. Say, I will live in dignity. If you haven't got the communion, article of communion, you can lift up your hands and get one. Can I have one, please? I'm going to live in dignity. Stand up. If you're wearing high heels, take it off. You're living. You're living in dignity. Dignity. Living in, digni in dignity. So every undignified living is broken this morning in the name of Jesus. Mm. I'm not going to follow the first service. I'm just going to let the spirit of God flow. Do you know what it is to get to the counter at Sainsbury's and find out that you do not have enough money for what you put in the trolley? And then you have to start taking it out. And the cashier or who is the cashier or the person who does the beep me, me yeah is looking at you funny in what she or he cannot even afford and you start saying sorry oh i'm sorry and then people behind you with their trolleys are like why did i come on this line it's undignified living and you leave the place depressed. 
how great I declare that your story will change where you will be on that queue and three places back you're telling that woman don't take anything out of that thing in fact put her bill on my bill how dignified is that they were having a practice here yesterday and we, my wife received a phone call and it was a was it a man or a woman or some man walked in to church and says I can't pay my bills can't pay my gas bill and I've gone over all and everywhere and every church and no one can help me and they call some people walk in their thoughts we know some people walk in and you can discern. And from where my wife is, my wife says, give him cash. Collect cash from people, give him this amount of money, at least minimum of 100 pounds. Give it to him and we'll replace it for whoever did that. They gave it to this man and tears started rolling down his face. What if we were not here? How many times has that man passed this place and paid no cognizance to what is going on except a bunch of people just walk in and walk out and didn't know that one day it may just save his children from starving. Many people are under the weight of sorrow, anxiety, and depression because they are not living a dignified life. And you can go, you can go. Ah, after two services, you can go. It's then that I said they should start. If you like, when you get there, you can sit or pray. <laughs> How many? Are you still standing at home? The book of Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 11 to 12. And this is what we're going to use to break bread as we stand this morning before the king of kings who we pay obedience and honor and dignify. He says, as for you also, I want to see those who are reading the Bible at least sometimes. He says, as for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, my chosen people, the covenant that was sealed with blood, I have freed your prisoners from the waterless pit. Amen. Yes, the, those who said amen, read. Those who didn't say, like, hey, what, does, what else is coming? God says, before, because you will live in dignity, he says, return to the stronghold of se security and what? Prosperity. I just missed someone. He says, return to the stronghold of security and prosperity. All prisoners who have hope, hopelessness is a sign of undignified living. He says, even today, over worship tabernacle, I'm declaring that I will restore double your former prosperity to you as firstborn amongst the nation. Did I hear an amen? Amen. amen. I've experienced it before. When we just got married and we were on our honeymoon. We stayed in this one star, minus one star hotel. Why my wife hasn't yet taken me back there, I have no idea. We just need to, you know when you just need to go and stand in front of the place like, and beyond that. 
I remember we traveled recently and they booked us into a hotel. I packed my bags immediately. In fact, I didn't even let, let it stay. I said, no, uh, uh, this is trauma. This is taking me back 20 something years ago. I said, uh, I asked the guy, where's the kitchen? Where's the, where's the, uh, where's the uh, breakfast? He showed me this small place. I said, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I just packed my bag. He says, I'm out of this place. My wife said, hey, let's see if we can upgrade. I said, there's no upgrade that can upgrade. I'm elevated. You see, there's upgrade and there's elevation. You understand? I'm not upgrading, I've elevated. Uh, um, but, but, but when we were there, we couldn't afford three squares, isn't it? So when we go in the evening to eat Chinese, which is something we so much like, that's our best meal. We'll stand in front of the restaurant and look at the prices. To other people, we were, they think we were looking at the menu. We were calculating what we can afford. And we'll look at ourselves and say, water only. And I said to her, I said, there will be a day that there is no restaurant that you will walk in, that you will stand in front. There's a day. No. I told her, I said, there will be a, no, no, no. In fact, there are places we will eat for free. I said, don't worry. And there are places where people have paid us to go in London that when I sat down, I'm like, eh? Do people actually eat here? In fact, there's a place we went to. They said we need, I wanted to eat duck. Was it duck? They said we have to book it two days in advance. I said, which kind of duck? <laughs> like, no, no, seriously. You have to book two days in, in, in West End. So I'm like, by the time we got there, they took us to a place and we sat in the place and then they now were doing live music. Ah, I said, my father, my father, you have not forsaken me. <laughs> it, we sat there, it was dignified. God says from now on, you will be living in dignity. Amen. I'll get you to sit in a second, but I want us to take communion standing. He says, even today I'm declaring that I will restore double your former prosperity to you as firstborn amongst the nation. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 7, dignified living. He says to worship tabernacle today at this end of your fast, as hungry as you may feel right now. He says, go eat your bread with joy. Can you take out the bread right now? It says, go eat your bread with joy. Go eat your bread. It says, experience dignified menu. Go eat your bread with joy and drink your wine with a merry heart. For the Lord has accepted your work. I need some energy from this second service. Yes. Then he added something to it. In Genesis 27 verse 28. He says, therefore may God give you of the dew of heaven. And of the fatness of the earth. And plenty of grain and wine. Our communion today is God lets me eat with joy. Amen. Are you ready for that? Amen. That as you lift your voice, it's not breaking yokes or breaking stuff. It's God, we come to an end and ushers. Can I say this? Nobody should be turned back. If they, they can come up, they can sit down on the pulpit. Nobody should be turned back home. Nobody. Uh, don't ever tell anyone it's full. It's full. It's full. There was, we will lap people. You understand? We'll do whatever it takes. We will all stand. We'll remove the chairs. No one should go back. So don't send anyone back. Uh, let them find a seat somewhere, someplace. We declare this afternoon, as we move into this afternoon, that you will eat in joy. 
Ecclesiastes 9, 7 says, as we finish this sad, did you see what it says? It says, go. You will go and you will eat with your bread with joy. And you will drink your wine with a merry heart. So your first prayer as you lift it up. Lift it up of yourself. And start to declare that in the name of Jesus, I start to eat with joy. Come on, I want you to start to pray. That God, I live a dignified life of joy. Say, I live a dignified life of joy. Ah, behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation with joy. You will draw waters from the wells of starvation. Salvation, start to declare. God, you said I should go and eat my bread with joy. Start to declare that I live a dignified life of joy. Ah, it's not the place I am, but the place where, where we will celebrate joy, where no problems are celebrated. Declare joy is my strength. Ah, as I draw water out of the wells of salvation, ah, I receive strength. Depression robs you of your strength. It isolates you from the streams of water. Declare that the joy that is a force that carries me through tough times. Ah, let it rest upon me. He says in Psalm 30 verse 5, weeping may endure for the night. Joy comes in the morning. Start to say, God, from now on, my family, ah, my home, ah, my life, we go forth with joy. We are led forth with peace. Mountains and hills will break forth in singing before me. Start to declare that God Ah, you are point unto those that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy. I didn't see you pray right now. Yeah, depression you will see no more. Sorrow you will see no more. You receive the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Declare that I shall not come. On, I want you to pray and declare this. Say, I will not eat the bread of sorrow. Come on, say, as I take communion this morning or afternoon. I will not eat the bread of sorrow. If you are home, I want you to start to declare that. I will not eat the bread of sorrow. God says I should go forth with joy. Come on, lift it up over your family. Lift the bread up and start to declare that I shall not eat the bread of sorrow. I shall not be defeated. I live a dignified life. My life is a living of dignity. I reject the spirit of sorrow and sadness. Start to declare in the name of Jesus that ah, the power of heaviness is broken around me that joy starts to flow joy starts to flow joy will carry my vessels of expectation the joy of the Lord will stitch me up and elevate me in Jesus name amen now lift it up above your head and I declare as from today we will eat with joy you said, go eat your bread with joy. This is the healing bread that truncates soul. This, as we partake of this, it will destroy heaviness. We are ending our fast by not eating bread, eating uh, Chinese, eating, but eating of the communion of God. Making a stamp of covenant that in the name of Jesus we will live a dignified life. Pray and when you're ready you may take it as we go into taking the of the cup. Oh. Oh 
parlé. It's a different service. I can feel it already. Come on, someone. Come on, that's the sound of victory. That's what they sang when Jesus rode into Jerusalem. You're riding into your own Jerusalem. Don't look around. No one is about to entertain you right now. Oh. Huh? He says two things. Ecclesiastes 9 7. He says, and drink your wine with a merry heart. You cannot be depressed and be merry at the same time. Ah. I do my heart desire to everyone here from the bottom of my heart being a representation of God and also of our family, my wife and I is that you will no more weep. That's everything I've spent this week is that joy and peace will always be in your habitation. Listen, let me say this. As we take communion, we are building an immunity against sorrow. I am not saying that it will not knock on the door. What I'm saying that there will be enough power on the inside of you that you will live a dignified life of joy. I missed an amen from someone. So your standing is small compared to your long standing of joy. You are making a stand that will be outstanding. He says, put that scripture back up. He says, you will drink with a merry heart. He says, for God has already accepted your works. So as we take of this communion today, it is with a merry heart continuously will you start to drink in the name of Jesus. I didn't hear an amen right now. Why? Because according to Genesis 27, 28, he says, therefore God will give you the dew of heaven. He says, and of the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. Wine makes you glad. Is that my wine makes you talk stupid sometimes uh, because when you're drunk with wine you don't know what you're doing may you be drunk with the wine of heaven in the name of Jesus now for one second you may put it up here you may bring it down you may be it up but I want you to lift your lift it above your head and say this is all the enemy will see the wine of joy the place of dignity start to pray that everything flavor will start to come into my life wine has different flavors has different reactions ah start to declare that upon my life ah upon my children ah, upon my home upon my business Ah, that I lift the banner of wine. I shall drink and as I finish this fast. Ah, the Lord has accepted my work. That right now in the name of Jesus, that as I take of this communion of this wine, I build an impenetrable wall of the blood of Jesus around my mind, around my emotions, around my life, around my being. Ah, as you think, come on somebody, you got to pray right now. Because as you're praying, something is happening. As we lift the banner over this church over our lives that there's a new wine in the name of Jesus now before you take it one more thing they ran out of wine 
and Jesus was there to provide wine. You will not run out of joy and happiness. How disastrous would that wedding have been if somebody says, can you give me wine? And they says, we've run out. It means that the day of dignity will be undignified. But Jesus was there to restore Ah, you just missed me. Jesus was there to restore dignity. So when, before they were ashamed, Jesus says, I will step in. As you finish this verse, Jesus will step into your life right now and give you dignity. Oh, can I hear an amen upstairs? Can I hear an amen online? That Jesus will provide new wine your home will not be undignified. You will not be undignified at work. You will not be put to shame in the name of Jesus. As you lift up the cup, you declare that over my life, new wine, new blessings. I will start to come. I will go and I will eat and I will be merry in the name of Jesus. Now let me give you one minute to pray over that. Now God, step into my life. I receive joy. Give me a life of dignity. Jabez, he prayed, he says, God, why is my life like this? Expand my coat. Ah, Jabez had to live. Ah, had to live his life of dignity. I need somebody to start to pray right now over that. Come on. Ah, he started to declare. He says, oh, somebody must cry out this afternoon. Say, oh, that you will bless me and enlarge my territory. First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10. First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10. He says, oh, I feel in this place that somebody ah, that has been put in a place of shame. I want you to cry and say, oh, that you will bless me and enlarge my territory. First Chronicles 4 10. Ah, that you will bless me and enlarge my territory he says let your hand be with me and keep me from all from harm so that I will be free from pain ah, ah. that's a man that had to call on God he was the one Jabez that prayed to the Lord of Israel somebody shout this and say oh Ah, the way you cry that even the devil is smiling say oh that you will bless me some of you have no idea uh, did, did we do this in the first service absolutely not as I sat there God said do not repeat the first service flow with me why did they take it off said, these guys put the thing back my friend and shout this loud say oh that you will bless me Take that communion and say, oh, that you will bless me and expand my territory. Say, please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all troubles and pain. And as you pray, God will grant your request. If you believe it, shout yeah! When you're ready, just go ahead and take it. Hand over whole shatter. Let us praise them. Jesus. 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 We are, we are standing in His presence on holy ground. Oh, that you will bless me. I don't know why I'm still on that prayer point. Oh, that you will bless me. 
I feel somebody should be praying. Right? Oh, that you will bless me. Ah, come on, put that scripture up again. Oh, that you will bless me. I don't want to duplicate a service. I want to flow. Oh, that you will bless me and expand my territory. It's called dignified living. Oh, come on, somebody, you got to start to pray. I will not follow what I've prepared. Oh, that you, you may take any kind of posture you want. If you want to sit, if you want to stand, but just start to say God that you will bless me oh that you will bless me and expand my territory oh if you want to kneel down at the altar you can come and kneel down at the altar if you want to walk up and down the aisle you can walk up and down and down if you feel cage where you are just move to a place say oh that you will bless me I, I feel God Moving in a different manner this afternoon. Oh, somebody, ah, from your pain, you gotta say, oh, that you will bless me. You will bless me. You will expand my territory. You will bless me. You will expand my territory. You are too quiet for what God wants to do. He says, please, 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 please be with me in all that I do. Oh, if you're online, I want you to cry to God. Say, God, bless me. Give me dignified living. Oh, that you will bless me. Ah, if you came to church for a sermon, you've missed it. Oh, that you will bless me. We've been fasting for the last seven days and we're in a prayer mode. Oh, that you will bless me. I feel some people need to connect. You may want to come down to this altar and cry out to God and God. Ah, this must end on dignified living. I want to live a life of dignity. I want to live a life of purity. I want to live a life of promotion. I want to live a life of prosperity. Any place where I've been shaped. Oh, that you will bless me. Bless my child. Bless the child in my loins. Bless me and expand my territory. Come on upstairs, don't look around, just stop in. God bless me. This was not what happened in the first service. There's a pool in this service. Somebody's pulling on God. Tell the ushers, excuse me. Tell the people around, excuse me. I gotta get to God. I gotta touch the aim of his garment. I got God to take that shame away. Take that pain away. Take that pain away. Take that pain away. Oh, that you will bless me. Take that pain away. Oh, I will no more be disgraced. I will no more beg. Oh, that you will bless me. Jabez says, enough is enough. I see an end oh, to your sorrow. I see an end oh, to your weeping. I see an end to your disaster. Oh, that you will bless me. Bless me. Bless me. Oh, you got them all shut up. Ah. Cry to God for dignified living. Cry to God for dignified living. Ah, they called you an outcast. Say, God. Ah, that pain will be taken away. Shame my detractors. Shame those who looked at me and looked down at me. Come on, church, you gotta pray. You gotta pray. Because if I had done this in the first service, I would have said, I'm just following. But there was nothing about this in the first service. God met them in the first service. God wants to meet you in this service. Oh, 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 oh. somebody touched the hem of his garment. I want to close, but I know God wants to do something. I may not be able to lay my hands upon you, but uh, heaven, he said, listen to what he says. Bring that scripture up again. He says, oh God, that you may bless me. Somebody needs to say this. He says, please be with me in all that I do and keep me from trouble. Another version, he says, oh, that you will bless me. Ah, and enlarge my He says, let your hand be with me. Somebody, I want you to lift your voice and say, God, let your hand 
let it be with me a hand that gives me a hand out a God that lays his hands upon me and anoints me a hand that expands my territory I'm breaking a sweat here because I know God is about to give you sweatless victories so to pray I'm breaking a sweat here because God is about to enlarge your territory ah, start to declare that that he will enlarge my territory ah, thank you G keep praying keep praying keep praying God is touching you right now maybe quiet but I want your Holy Spirit to move somebody is receiving deliverance from pain thank you father we thank you yeah 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 katanda boho shata hiya i'm praying for somebody right here that you will not have to walk into your 80s you don't have to walk into your 70s ah where a small child will be sending you on errands what job are you doing that's undignified? I change it right now in the name of Jesus. Dignified living. Living. Dignified living. Dignified living. Dignified living. Ah, uh, I don't care what posture you take, whether you want to sit or stand, but I just step into this because I have no idea how God is leading us this afternoon. Dignified living. Listen to me as we pray. 
I said, God, come to Bohushata. Nando Bohushata. Yes, 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 yes. It will burn every undignified living. That's what we're asking. Your awesome presence. Come on, someone.
gave me one key. Guys, listen to me before I close. One key to dignified living. And it's called grace. 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 <laughs> Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10. Still maintain that prayer. Still maintain that prayer. I'm not going to preach as much as I did in the first service. Listen, this is the word for you. Standing, sitting, in the aisle, wherever you are. So if you came in and you didn't find the seat, people are not sitting down that much. He says, a prayer. We're, we're, we're crying to God. He says, but by the remarkable grace of God, I am what I am. Can somebody say that to themselves right now? Say this, say, by the remarkable grace. You're too timid for that. Say, but by the remarkable grace of God. I am what I am. And what? His grace towards me was not without effect. In fact, I worked harder than all of the apostles. Though it was not I, but the grace of God, his unmerited favor and blessing which Listen to me. There are three prayers we're going to quickly pray. God has already led us in a direction. So this is not going to be long. Everybody is looking for acceptance and love. But Paul says, I am what I am. Everybody is looking for their, even their children to accept them. So we want to be in their good book. Paul says, I am what I am. One day God says to me, don't pander to your church. You are what you are. Those who will stay with you will stay with you. Those who will leave will leave. But you are who you are. You don't need to pay for that guy's tuition. You are what you are. If he likes you, he likes you. If he doesn't like you, good riddance. But you're living a life of dignity. And it will be grace who will undergird your dignity. That's the end word for this fast. Grace simply means God's ability to make you function. You are no more functioning in depression. Grace is God's ability on your inability. Grace. Anytime we talk about grace, we're talking about a force that can bring progressive change. Grace is what made Jacob say, I know I know how to rear cattle but for this kind of elevation that I need in my life, I need an intervention of God. And God spoke to him in the middle of the night and God says, this is the key. On this merit of dignity, we are going to quickly pray on three major points. Grace, your first one will be grace for dignity. Psalm 84 and verse 11. Take any posture you like. For the Lord God is our son and shield. He will give me grace and glory. Are you going to say that again? For the Lord God is my son and my shield. He gives me grace and glory. The Lord will withhold no good thing from me who do what is right. 
lift your right hand and shout this. This is, this is dignity. This is something that will let you live in the abundance. Say this. Say, I carry. That's too weak. Say, I carry the aroma of greatness wherever I go and in all my endeavors. I want you to say this with faith. Say the aura and charisma of greatness will cause all limitations in my life to melt. I didn't hear you. Say this quarter. Come on, I want your voice to raise. I say this quarter. My life in Christ is fueled by grace. Say my health is fueled by grace. Say my effort is filled by grace. Say my marriage is filled by grace. Say my career is filled by grace. Say my business is filled with grace. Now shout this loud for last. Say the banner of grace replaces every label of failure. Now I want you to pray about that. The aroma, the aroma of grace. Quickly, I want you to declare that. The first thing is grace for dignity. Dignity. You have declared that I've secured sufficient grace in God where failures cannot exist. Declare that I will no more be embarrassed with the threat of failure. Declare that every closet of pain in my life is cleaned out by the sufficient measure of God's grace. Say grace, 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 pray grace, pray grace. The grace of God that will repair. The grace of God that will restore. The grace of God that will take you from disappointment to euphoric celebrations. Start to declare that in the name of Jesus. Start to declare that I'm rescued by grace. Start to declare it in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Shout this loud. You're going to take a lot of confessions. Say this. Say right now. I will not be embarrassed by the threat of failure. For I live by grace. Say right now, the grace of God. Say it emphatically. Say right now, the grace of God repairs the damage and restores me from disappointment to euphoric jubilation. Ah, declare that I am rescued by grace wherever life has dropped me say grace brings me to another level say grace dignifies me say grace confirms my appointment say by grace i will start to rise shout this last say i receive grace for dignity number two number two number two number two God says, pray and lead them in what I call a grace for ease. Some of you do not celebrate prophetic words. It's called a grace for ease. First Corinthians, the same thing. Chapter 15 and verse 10. The Passion Translation. Look at what it says. You've got to shout this by yourself. I'm not going to read it to you. Say it loud. Say, but God's amazing grace yet not in my son's strength but God's for, shout it loud, his what? Has is poured out on me. He says, listen to me. I want to teach you a bit, a bit this, 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 this afternoon. He says, I worked harder than the rest. Grace is God's ability at work in your spirit that makes you do things with ease. Grace came upon Samson. 
he carried a gate behind his back and he was walking as if he was just carrying a bowl of water. When, listen to me, when you find grace, you will stop walking. You, you didn't hear what I said. When you find grace, you will stop struggling. You must have heard of some people who say they don't struggle what to do. They don't struggle with their work. When I was in IT, there were some guys that don't struggle. With, I, I hated it. I was afraid to go to work. I was completely useless. It was the money. But there will be guys who will be there and they just do it with ease. He plays the keyboards with ease. He has nothing in front of him to look at the courts. I have to practice. The, everything you see that morning takes hours. Because I have to work at it. He has to play at it. That's the reason why purpose is important. Roger Federer, who's, cons who's considered one of the best uh, tennis players who have ever held the racket. I know some people have surpassed him, but, 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 but if you ever see Roger Federer play tennis, he doesn't run around that much. He plays with ease. They said he's the most elegant player that they have ever seen. Hey, there are some people that you will ask, how's your marriage? You say, oh, it's easy. God has blessed us. And you'll be asking, give me the ingredient. There's nothing. There's nothing. You, 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 you will see some people that um, it, it's not because they're using the five languages of love. That is what is making them work. No, 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 no. It's just that they just live in ease. You, 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 get, you get married to a guy who just doesn't talk much or speak. He is as dumb and deaf as he comes. No matter how much you scream and shout, you get zero response. And you're shouting at him like, what is wrong with you? You're not exciting. He, he has the grace to be quiet to your foolishness. And he will always say, I love you. And he does. Because God gave him the grace to accommodate your excesses. It's just a grace. There, there's, there's somebody in this church who, who deals with property and all that kind of stuff. And I ask him, how, how do you do this? Do you, how do you make all these phone calls? How do you he says, says the grace. One time he says, I do not get myself involved in any business that does not fall in my grace. Oh, oh, one day I went to my twin brother's house and they were nine o'clock, everybody shut down and they started praying and I so much enjoyed it. So I went back to my house and told my wife, nine o'clock. Every evening we'll pray. Suffice to say, for the first three prayer meetings, at that nine o'clock we were fighting. You pray, me pray. No, I don't want to pray. I don't feel like it. Oh, I'm cooking. And at 9 o'clock, I said, but we're supposed to be meeting. Is that 9 o'clock that she says she wants to put the fish inside the oven? We, we argued till, after a while, we suspended it. There was no grace. And one morning, we woke up, and before we left home, I said, babe, let's just pray before we go. And then she started praying. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. At one point in time, no July. It was by ease. And our grace found us in the morning while their grace found them in the evening. Grace. There will be a grace of ease upon you in the name of Jesus. When Esther, uh, when Esther appear, uh, appeared before the king, it was not her makeup. It was grace. It was easy. When Rebecca met Isaac, she didn't go looking. She didn't go on, uh, what's that uh, app that you use? Tin, no, Tinder doesn't, uh, eh? Hinge, hinge. She didn't go on hinge. She unhinged herself from hinge and hinged herself to grace. And all she did was just carry a bowl of water 
the most undignified. Have you ever met a woman carrying water? She's not with makeup at all. And God made her up. Just by grace. Stand up if you are, if you can, or if you want to kneel down. Uh, it's either kneel or stand. You're going to take one of those postures, and you're going to declare, say, God in the say, say I plug myself, I plug myself into the socket of the anointing of ease. Oh, you didn't say that loud to my to my Say, I plug myself into the socket, into the power into the lifeline of the anointing of ease say Jacob had supernatural ease after his encounter with God say father give me supernatural ease I didn't hear you say God give me supernatural ease shout it out say I Start to go up with ease in the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to pray over everything that you struggle with. Anything that you struggle with, ask for ease. You shall not be struggled to be recognized. Declare that my home, my business, my children, my career, my life, my dreams will be enlarged with grace and ease. Come on, you got to pray. You got to pray. You could kneel down. You can stand. You can anywhere posture you take right now. Three things we're praying for. We've paid about one dignity. Second thing is ease. God says from now things will become easy. Ah, say God, give me the anointing. Ah, that will celebrate easy. Now start to declare sweatless victories effortless success is come on I want you to pray Some of you don't understand this prophetic word. It's the anointing of ease. Ooh. The anointing to do everything with ease. The anointing not to struggle. The anointing not to struggle. Come on. Struggling to be a father, struggling to be a mother, struggling to be a wife, struggling to be a husband, struggling to stay married, struggling in your career. There's an anointing for ease that's causing depression. Anointing for ease. Hand in Jesus' name. Let's take these confessions. Confessions are important. Say right now, in the name of Jesus. The anointing of ease will ordain me to produce maximum results. If those words really touch you, you've got to be able to say amen. Say right now, in the name of Jesus, grace will be my right hand this season. Say I will be carried further and quicker than my contemporaries. Say grace will extinguish Say grace will extinguish every flame of despair. Say right now, by the anointing of ease, by the laying of hands of the almighty God, I'm elevated with special rights. Say right now, I have unique advantages. Say right now, I receive peculiar benefits superior position special opportunities special provision supernatural entitlement say right now i enter the best seasons of my life say right now i have independence of effort say right now i declare there will be ease 
of performance in Jesus' name. If you believe that, shout amen. amen. Grace for dignity, grace for ease. And fi finally, the last one God said I should pray for you is financial grace. You have no idea. Second Corinthians is a previous, is a famous verse. We say that every single Sunday, but this is different. I'm using the TPT. You read it loud to yourself. Ready, steady, go. Say yes. No, 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 no. Yes means there's no no. <laughs> he means there's no no. Shout it and say yes. yes. Go on. God. Stop. Did you see that? God is ready to overwhelm me with. Did you see that? Shout it loud. Let the devil be ashamed. Say yes. God is more than ready to overwhelm me with every form of grace so that I will have yeah, 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 yeah. I need you to say that so that I will have more than enough of everything every moment why he will make me overflow with abundant where in Lift both hands. I prophesy over you that according to that scripture, you shake off the dust of your financial past. I declare as you enter into the month of April, you shake off the dust of the past. The errors of your financial past is eliminated this afternoon. I declare that the high walls of financial imprisonment will fall flat in the name of Jesus. I declare there is a hurricane of deliverance over your finances in the name of Jesus. Some of you think sometimes, no, it's in everything. I declare upon worship tabernacle, you are set free from poverty in the name of Jesus. Every, say this to me, say, say this now, say every issue that is pulling me back into debt is broken. Now, listen to me. The biggest form of depression is finances. It's finances. It's finances. Anything can speak to you. Anything can make you depressed. Anything. You know, I'm a pastor. I always tell you the truth. I walked into the plane one time and then I turned right. And I was depressed because the people that I was going with me turned left. You will get that tomorrow. And I sat where I was and throughout the entire journey, I was depressed. Especially when they were fighting in my cabin. Their cabins, you don't fight. And I was depressed. I said, God, why, 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 why not me? There's a time we flew back and my wife could not sleep. Suddenly I said, it's well, it's well, honey, it's well. Hey, but my leg is paining me. I said, it is well, it is well. In the middle of the night, she took hold of herself. Went onto the, her iPad. Googled pain in the leg. He says, if you have traveled, you may be affected by DVT. I just saw some movement out. She was in the car. Before I could know anything, she was at the hospital. Suffice to say, she didn't come back that day. They quickly were injecting her. Only for her to speak to one of her daughters and says, ah, who was a doctor? And she said, ah, I experienced DVT and all that kind of stuff. It was when I traveled. Only for her daughter to say, ah, what, what coach did you travel? 
said they're coming ah mommy that's economy syndrome that's all she said God will provide for all of us but from that day I said to myself in the name of the almighty God I elevate myself and the first time I sat in premium, at least it's premium, two of us were sitting together. And then when I felt pain, I said, I'm going up again. <laughs> That's why when you invite me for your wedding, don't think it twice. Throw me in a car, I'm not coming. I'm not coming. For there is a grace for financial breakthrough. We couldn't do that if we were still in debt. There was a time my son had a need and if we were still in debt, we wouldn't be able to provide for his need. You have no idea what we're talking about. And you young ones need to get this straight now. Break every hold of debt upon your life. Rebuke stupid spending. Hear my word. S-T-U-P-I-D. Because it is destroying your future. Guy, which car are you driving? This is not the time. How many jobs are you doing? One job. In this COVID, sitting down at home, why can't you do two jobs from home? Can't you get two contracts and do it from home? This is the time to work hard. You see, we that has gone into our 50s and our 60s, we need to slow down. You need to run fast. Every financial pressure is broken today in the name of Jesus. You will have to have ease. Listen, listen, listen. As I, as I close. Prayer brings answers. Let's stop praying without an answer. The only thing Pentecostals, rascals enjoy doing is praying with no responsibility. There was, a, there was a year, years that every September I would fall sick. There was one that I had facial paralysis. I was preaching here and my face dropped. And I remember Azuka was on the stuff that he said, he told them to stop. Stop filming. Every September. It was not until one bishop, Bishop Esando, came into church one day. And he was preaching, just looked at my wife and says, you got to pray for your husband for September. He said, in fact, something happened in your life in September that is also trying to affect your husband. And true to God, when she looked, she said, ah, actually, my dad died in September. Every September. So I went on my knees. Ah, it's a prophecy, isn't it? Ah, thank God, professor. So I should do nothing. No. I prayed, and when I was praying, God answered. What did he say to me? Lose weight. You didn't laugh because you're guilty. <laughs> Babe, isn't that true? He says, lose weight. I wasn't that overweight, overweight. But he says, get into exercise. This is the 10th year or 8th year that I have not experienced that. The first thing I did is Shanti. Do you know Shanti? You don't know Shanti? You need to know Shanti. I will introduce you to your Shanti. I picked up his DVDs. Insanity. You see, for dignity... There needs to be some level of. I picked up his DVD. Ah! I did not know how unfit I was. Ah! Which one? Which one? Any one of them. And then he says the next level is one hour. Ah! But now I live in dignity. As you pray, God will give you an answer. Amen. Don't say amen. Just do it. <laughs> I, 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 in fact, you know when you use it so much? One day a builder came to my house and was looking at my wife doing it. He says, you know, I'm sweating. 
and I'm tired just looking at you. So I asked the guy, I said, do you want tea? He says, ah. I should drink tea. I said, yeah, but you drink coffee and tea every time you come here. He says, ah, Sean, tea has delivered me from tea. The way I'm looking, he says, where did you get that thing from? I said, you buy it from me. I had to exercise myself into good health. There is a financial exercise that God wants some of you to do. Because finances kills creativity. Lift your hands. God says, I should just declare this upon you. Divine wisdom for finances will rest upon you. You will recover from economic suicide in the name of Jesus. I declare you will recover the mindset of financial literacy in the name of Jesus. You will recover from credit crisis in the name of Jesus. You will recover from being a financial victim in the name of Jesus. Now God says there will be financial ease. Say this after me. Say I'm set free from the captivity of poverty. Say loud, I know we're hungry. Say, I'm set free from being a prisoner of poverty. Yokes are being broken as you're saying this. Say, I receive healing from the affliction of poverty, from the infection of toil, from bankruptcy. Say, right now, I am no longer a liability, but an asset. Say right now, financial rehabilitation occurs in my life today. Say I rebuke financial depression. I command you to go and prosper in the name of Jesus. I command you to acquire and maintain a great lifestyle in the name of Jesus. Every de- come on, pray with me. Every devouring waster in your life, I rebuke in the name of Jesus. Drowning spirit of financial depression is vanquished in the name of Jesus. The spirit, the spirit of the empty is destroyed in the name of Jesus. Lone sharks will not swim in your territory. You will build a nest of a climate of the supernatural in the name of Jesus. I command you to get used to having more than enough in the name of Jesus. I want to declare upon somebody right now that every outstanding debt are broken in the name of Jesus. I feel in my spirit, whether you're online, Oh, you're watching me right now. Somebody received. Put your hands down. Close your eyes. Somebody received a bad news that is about to plunge them into a financial abyss. If that is you, lift your hands because I'm reversing that order in the name of Jesus. I see you, darling. I reverse that. I see you, sir. I re- anyone upstairs, I, I, I reverse that order in the name of Jesus. And I hear God say to me to tell you that mercy is going to abound on you right now. You didn't lift your hands because you were ashamed. God is about to dignify your life. Where that shame has come, I command financial dignity to come to you in the name of Jesus. As we end this fast, the bonds of financial pressure is broken over your life and over this church in the name of Jesus. Now I want everyone to lift up their hands. Everyone, everyone, lift your hands up because those hands are hands of elevation. They're hands of dignity. They're hands of joy. The hands that break the, f- the cycle of financial turbulence. I know your hands are weary, but lift your hands and I declare that as Jesus lifted his hands on the cross 
and said it is finished. As you lift your hands, depression is finished. Sorrow is finished. Struggle is finished. Financial issues are finished. I declare that a lack of wisdom financially is finished. I declare supernatural ease upon you to overtake and to pursue and to overtake in the name of Jesus. As I close down this meeting from now on, after seven days of praying on this Palm Sunday, I declare you walking into victory in the name of Jesus. I declare supernatural ease. I declare supernatural dignity. I declare supernatural financial provision. Those three things, let it manifest itself over your life in the name of Jesus. Now I declare you to walk into your place of deliverance and place of joy and place of peace in the name of Jesus. I declare that you have dominion in the name of Jesus. I declare you will take up reservations in lack-free territories in the name of Jesus. And above all, I start to decree ah, in the name of Jesus that yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace so that you will have more than enough in everything, every moment and in every way. I declare and finish by saying he will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. And the church shouts a loud amen. Clap your hands and rejoice before the Lord God. I didn't hear you. Clap your hands and rejoice before the Lord God. For this is your time of delivery. You may go to your seats with joy. Go to your seats with peace. And you may take your seats in the presence of God. Joy is coming to you right now. Let me give you two or three things that I want you to understand. Man, Yes, Kato Bobo Hush. Huh? Hallelujah. For the Lord God mighty reign. That's what he will do in your life, he will reign. Lift your voice as we finish this fast. Hallelujah. Holy. Katabahasha Tababa. Holy. Speak to him. Say, Are you? Let me say this to you. The word has the final say over your life. And the final say is you will never go back to depression. My heart's desire with everything within me is that you will not shed tears of sorrow in the name of Jesus. Now before we go, we're going to give our offering unto God. A tithes and an offering. And listen to me as you, as you give to God. You've got to understand that you've got to know how to give a dignified offering unto God. In this church, we do not pressure you on what you need to give to God. And when we talk about the tithes, we don't talk about it from a legalistic point of view. You can give whatever percentage you want. It doesn't really matter. In the New Testament, it doesn't matter. 
But you've got to ask yourself, what do I want to do to dignify God? What would give him dignity? What, and, and as you do that, then God dignifies you. As you are you following what I'm saying? And that's why when, when Abraham did it, he looked, what, what is worth? What is my God worth? What is this Melchizedek said? What is it worth? So he, the Bible says he gave a tenth of all uh, to him. So do whatever you want to do. But in this, as you finish the fast, just give God something that will bless him, that will say to him, I really appreciate you. And that God, you are worthy to be praised. And as you do that, God will bless you. If you want to do it online, you can do it online. Uh, do it, uh, give it, it's time to give. Uh, this is our sort code and our bank details. And as you do that, uh, God will start to bless you. Uh, we'll take some announcements while you're preparing your offering. If you need an envelope, lift up your hand. You may want to give it through cash or you may want to get, there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's one of my uh, brothers lifting up a hand there. Lift up your, you may want to do it by debit card, electron or switch if you don't want to do it online. Uh, and then we'll come back and bless the, the, the offering and I believe in Jesus' name you will be blessed. We'll quickly take the announcements and then we'll close the service and that has been a great one week of prayer and fasting. Amen. Good afternoon, church. I'll quickly take the announcement. It's been awesome, and God will continue to manifest himself in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Okay. Um, just to let you know that we've got midweek service. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word and keep praying. We can't stop. So after this one week, we're still meeting, not just on Wednesday, but make sure you have an altar in your house where you seek the face of God constantly and let God communicate with you and do what he tells you to do. And you will see the manifestation in Jesus' name. Amen. So midweek service is 6 a.m. on Wednesday. And in the evening at 7.30, we have the in-person service for you to come into fellowship and you will be blessed. So let's just, and you know, it, be in the company of believers. And that will help you greatly in Jesus' name. But most especially, the reason why we are here, that we are Christians, is because of what Christ did for us. So this Friday, which is Good Friday, can I just invite everyone to come into the house. Come on, guys, shout, it is Christ. He is risen. It's saying Jesus, the Messiah. So we've got a production here, Insignia and the creative um, team. They've actually created an amazing production for us. So it's going to start at 7.30, but can I advise you to come in at 7.00? So that you could get a place. But even if you don't, let's all come together and experience this great um, production. Okay? And then on Easter Sunday, we've got three services. The 9.30, the 11.30, and the third service, I believe, starts at 1. And it's the baptism um, celebration. We've got over 30 odd people being baptized. But if you want to join them, there's still time. So the last class is this Thursday at 8 o'clock. And you can get all the necessary information from our website and app. And God bless you as you do so. You're going to be water baptized here, And it will be amazing in Jesus' name. So we're looking forward to that. Okay. And for second service, there's a request that we will really appreciate men volunteers to help us clear chairs on the ground floor after the service. We need them removing to the children's church for the Easter production and set back up on Friday, on the seven, um, this Friday at the end of the production. So please, if you want to help, please see Tyler and Cassie after the service. Okay. And before I round up, is it your anniversary? I know Pastor Pauline, Pastor Efe, oh my goodness, all the pastors. Hmm. April seems to be a great month. to celebrate. <laughs> yes, it is. I do, I, do, I do recognize that as well. But if you got married in April, do you want to wave your hand, please? Anyone else? I just pray that God will continue to be the fabric of your home. It will be the foundation. It will be the rock. Everything you need to stabilize your marriage will rest upon you. And God will continue to bless and increase you. You will not be, well, you guys definitely can be a statistic for divorce. But you'll be a light to shine to the next generation to know what marriage is all about. And God will bless you, your home, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. April, you know, anybody celebrating the birthday, there's a special man in my life and in your life that, you know, this Tuesday is his birthday. You know, my pastor, my husband, <laughs> is his birthday on Tuesday. Anybody else? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, yes. Hallelujah. We celebrate you all and we pray 
that God's grace and mercy will continue to be upon your life. This will be the best year ever as God elevates you to take you into your own and his unmerited favor and grace will rest upon you. As we prayed about grace, in every situation, in every area of your life, you will experience the grace of God in Jesus' name. Pastor Efe, where are you, please? I'm here. Oh. <laughs> okay, quickly. Um... Okay, Thank quickly, um, oh, uh, just before we finish, as you all know, it's our pastor's birthday. We've celebrated him in the first service. So and we are going to celebrate elders. him as well yes. for the second service. Please, church, I want us to rise up together as we sing Se in yes. harmony and in tune in to <laughs> celebrate. <laughs> Amen, 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 amen. Can I have some volume? Um, just quickly, um, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17 says, Let the elders who rule well to be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and in teaching. For those of you who already know, um, for those of you who do not know, Pastor is one who gives himself to everything that he does. During the first service, myself and Pastor Femi literally had to crash the service so that we could do this. Pastor was going to close the service without celebrating anything. And that's how he is. So I want to admonish us. There's something we don't usually do, and Pastor doesn't do it, but I would teach, I would like to let you know, giving to your priest. I just read the scripture for us now. So his birthday is on Tuesday, um, and we're accepting cars, houses, ships, boats, yachts, um, choppers, Three, three propellers, four is fine, we'll deal with that. But whatever gifts you've got, put something together as a church, you know, as individuals. Next Sunday, this is not because he, 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 does, he needs it, but this is a blessing coming back to you. I have scriptures for, for that, but let me not take our time because time is well spent. But please, church, let's get into the habit of giving to our priest because pastor gives everything to make sure that we are blessed. And what we want is for him to go back and be satisfied by what we give back to him in return because he's a human being as well. Please, amen? Amen, pastor, we just want to celebrate you. We ask that the grace of God will rest upon you. We ask that God will multiply the seeds that you have sown in our lives, that it will come back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. God will give you grace. There's something that came to my spirit. You will not be afraid. You will not be afraid to speak. You will not be afraid to be the voice that God has called you to be. God's grace will be abound upon you in the name of Jesus. Everything you lay your hands to do will prosper. Your voice will carry grace. Your voice will carry power. Your voice will carry the spirit of God in the name of Jesus. Everything that God has called you to accomplish, you will accomplish in the name of Jesus. Every divine door that needs to be opened will be opened in the name of Jesus. Every footprint, every step that God has created for you to step into you, will step into it in this season in the name of Jesus. This is a season of opening, a season of enlargement, a season of increase, and a season that God will cause his face to shine upon you tremendously in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy birthday, Pastor. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Amen. Amen. All right, it's time for the press. We have press officers as well in the beauty. All right, let's go. Let's go. Yes, you got it right. Yes, also, golf kids, and um, Pastor is very much into his golf, you know, so whatever it is, you know, we'll accept it. Amen, 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 amen. Uh, thank you, thank you, George. Thank you so much uh, uh, for celebrating this, uh, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm, uh, so, sometimes when I'm going out in the morning, my wife will say, you are addicted. I said, to what? I said, golf. I said, it's a good midlife, midlife crisis. <laughs> So I go all over the world. It's just, just something that... That's another answer. I must confess to you. When you pray, you need to receive an answer. And the answer I got when I was going through a dark hole is find an outlet. That's what I got. Find an outlet. So my outlet is I just go and play golf. I see some people in those golf balls and I hit it. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. And everyone needs to find an outlet, something they enjoy to do. And it will be such a blessing. Amen. Let's pray over our offering, isn't it? Say, my God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to me in abundance that I may under all circumstance whatever the need be, self-sufficient possessing enough to require no aid or support and I'll be furnished in abundance unto every good work and charitable donation in Jesus name. Someone say aloud, amen. 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 You may go ahead and give before we close. Is there anyone coming to worship Tabernacle for the first time? If this is your first time just wave at me. I may not see you but the usher Wait, oh, I see. Oh, above, I see your hand, sir. I see God bless you. Uh, anyone else that we're missing? God, what, come on, you can rejoice with them. I thank you so. Oh, I see that hand. Yeah, right at the back. God bless you. Maybe I should just pop upstairs to close the service. Uh, who? Anyone upstairs? Anyone upstairs? Let me. Oh, there, there are some hands upstairs. God bless you, and God keep you. Thank you so much for coming. Ah. Uh, uh, who is in the welcome team that wants to tell me if they're going to go upstairs? Is there a room upstairs or is it filled up? Are we taking some? So we, we can, yes. Okay, after the service, we want to take you upstairs. Uh, actually, we want to do that now because we're closing the service. If this is your first time, you can come with your family and friends. We want to take you upstairs into our lounge, give you some tea. You can break your fast over there. Don't, don't let anyone break into the room. Uh, you got, and so up there, we'll take care of you, give you some teas, give you some stuff and all that. And this person that laid the covenant seed on this altar, I decree increase upon their lives in the mighty name of Jesus and the blessings of God will be upon them for it must have been a command from God for her to do this and I declare it in the name of Jesus and that covenant seed will produce covenant in their life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, and please men, can you stay behind so we can clear this, uh, these chairs uh, quickly. If we have 10 men, 15 men, we'll do it in, in, in five seconds. All the men that go into the gym that we cannot see their value, uh, we need to see it here right now. Uh, could, you, uh, could you see my protocol? Come, come, come. Let them see. You can see my protocol. So from now on, so, so from, from now on, every man that goes to the gym is going to be my protocol. I've got to have two or three every Sunday. Uh, 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 and ladies too. God bless you and God keep you. Let's close this service. Easter Sunday, bring your friends. Now, I know we say there are three services, but let me put um, clarity to it. Uh, the third service is for baptism. It's not going to be a full service like this full service. So if you're coming for baptism, try to come for this second service. And then after the second service, we will do the baptism. Invite your family. Invite your friends. We will celebrate here. You understand? Take some photographs. And I believe that is a prophetic word will come upon you as you get baptized. Some people are not sure. Should I get baptized? Should I not get baptized? If you're not sure, get baptized there's nothing that goes wrong with that you understand if you now don't then the shorty may start to manifest itself so get baptized come for the lessons on thursday and then finally make up your mind uh, if you are baptized in a catholic church and they sprinkled water upon your head it will be nice to be baptized by the dipping inside the water full ba baptism means baptizo 
baptized in the water. And God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's share the grace as we close. Pick up your children at the gate. And I believe the blessings of God will be with you. Come out on Friday. Let it be a blessing. And we're not stopping our midweek service. So, so Wednesday morning, 6 a.m., you'll meet us online again. And then 7.30 in church. And God bless you as we go into our Easter celebration. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. As you break the fast, shout this loud. Say, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. And as I close, I hear this in my spirit. God said to me, I don't know who you are and I've never don't know where you're coming from and all that kind of stuff. But God said to me as I close this meeting that there will be an ease of divine association. Meaning there will be weddings, 10, 10, that are going to take place. Apart from the ones who've booked, 10 new weddings are going to take place by this time next year up to the month of May and June. It will be quick. It will be fast. It will be effortless. It will be without ease. And all the struggles of the past, it will, it will, it will fade into insignificance as God hooks you up with the right person. I know some of you are not interested, but I'm talking to those who are interested, whether online, that God is going to make the glory of the latter house surpass the former. God is going to take away the weakness and the shame of the past and give you dignified hookups in the name of Jesus and I will marry you in the name of Jesus and it will be a blessing now we will count it by next year and I will, you will see that the word of the Lord will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus you're walking into a new door no more sorrow no more weeping now go forth for the rest of the year with the empowerment of grace and do not allow depression to come in may God be with you and God bless you and happy Palm Sunday to those in church and those online. God bless you and that's a mic drop. <laughs>